Hi, I am Peter. Uh, I develop uh, a robot camera crane and uh, sometimes I get to a point where I want to document uh, the progress, how far I get. And now this is a video I'm going to show you uh, my robot, what it is doing now, uh, how it's working. Sometimes it helps for people who also want to develop such things. And uh, ah, it's interesting for myself as well to see uh, the different stages of my development. So now uh, I'm testing the robot new feature uh, to teach the robot by moving it uh, uh, by hand and record the movement uh, path and replay it back after, after I recorded it. As you can see, um, I have a, a do-it-yourself or a custom-built robot uh, mechanic. Basically, uh, the components came from industry robots, but it's not one industry robot, but <laughs> maybe uh, four or five different robot parts are uh, put together to have this, uh, this structure. The mainframe uh, was a robot SCARA, but uh, the second axis was flipped. Um, the head was a Mitsubishi robot, but you can see it's, it's entirely different now, because uh, one axis, uh, the rotating axis, uh, is still axis somehow, but uh, the other axis is also had to be flipped. Uh, okay, so very many machined parts uh, made it possible to to use this robot has for my purposes. So, um, uh, how, I can, how uh, we can teach the robot? Um, I think that's the, the most interesting part uh, in my robot, because I can see very many robots are, are built, uh, you can see many of them on the internet, and, uh, and there are trains which are driven by stepper motors and they use Arduino to control it and so on, but uh, I think the interesting feature in this robot is uh, um, this, this hand teaching method. Um, basically, when you uh, de-energize the hand, um, it's possible to move all the axes by hand. So um, the, the drives are not connected now, only the encoders. So when I want to teach the robot, I simply start recording and say, okay, I want to have a, a, a given camera path and it can be recorded by the controller. The encoders are still alive, robots are not, uh, the, the drives are not uh, connected, but, but the encoders uh, always give uh, position data. Also, this position data is, is very accurate. Uh, when the robot starts, uh, first I send the robot to a home position. Basically, the homing method is quite simple. I start to drive uh, the motors to a given direction, and when it reaches its final point, where it cannot drive anymore, then, oh, come on, it was maybe not the very, very bad, best idea to represent it in this position. But when, I reach, when it reaches the, the, the final point, the, the drives are stuck, and uh, the controller realized that that's, that's the, the end point, and then it starts driving back the drives to the encoder zero position. So if there is any, you know, mechanical uh, uh, deformation or anything, it doesn't matter, because uh, when it reaches the, the final point, then it always drives back to the encoder zero point, and from this point, it drives back to a kind of predefined uh, position. My robot's predefined position is, uh, all, everything is, uh, is horizontal, and uh, the, the orientation of the camera is, is uh, straight on and parallel with the, with the slider. So basically that's my, my home position. And the, when the robot starts, it always goes back to this home position. From this position, always the position is calculated. Um, the, the second uh, part of the teaching is when you want to record the, ca the, the camera path. Now it's uh, possible to, to do it like uh, hit the record button and then start moving the head by hand and, uh, and the record starts. Every uh, second I make 10 samples and uh, the controller can handle uh, 3000 uh, samples. So it's quite a long period I can record. And then uh, when I play back uh, the positions, it interpolates between these points. So I have a really nice and smooth camera path. Also, when I, when I move the camera, it's nice that, uh, you know, the drives are not on, but uh, 
the motor is kind of brake driven through uh, harmonic drives, harmonic drives, these drives are harmonic drives. So I have, a, I, I need a little force to move the camera, so it's not like, you know, free running drives, but, but a little force is needed. So it's a, it's a bit like a feeling when you, when you use a, a camera head. And, and, and move your camera with a, with a nice, like, Manfred toe camera head. Uh, so, well, I think it's quite, quite a good feeling. As you can see, uh, the movement of, of the, uh, the area of the, of, the, of the robot is quite big, so uh, I can lift up my camera, like, uh, about two, two meters. I can uh, move it down to about, I don't know, one meter, around one meter. I have a slider which moves uh, 0.8 meters. And I also can rotate uh, the arm uh, 240 degrees. So it's quite a nice, nice, nice big path I can I can reach with this with this rope. So when I want to teach, I start you know moving the head by by hand, start recording the camera path, and then and then. Uh, Play it back. That's basically the method. I think it's quite good. Uh, of course, I usually have a, a camera monitor here, which uh, which shows me what I'm actually recording. I'm using a, a Z cam, a, a Z cam camera for recording. Uh, it's it's a Chinese uh, cheap, half professional camera. Uh, at the moment, I'm not so happy with this camera. You will see on my sample images that uh, there are, there are dead pixels uh, on on the, the recorded image. I contacted Zcam, they cannot do anything with it, so, you know, uh, so I don't know what to say. I still hope that some recalibration maybe, maybe, maybe decrease the problem, but, you know, it looks like a professional camera, but it is not a professional camera, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, but it's good for playing. Uh, in my, for my purposes, it's just fine because I can control the camera using HTTP protocol. It also has a lancy uh, connection possibility. Um, actually, some words about my control. I use an EIE robot controller. It's kind of uh, customized, so uh, I had to change some things. I had to program the controller, so it's not like, you know, put together everything and then works like, like charm. But uh, you have to configure the controller and then you have to write the robot program. And, um, and also I have a PSC in my controller which communicates with the robot controller. Robot controller has uh, serial ports and um, uh, I, I give the orders and I receive the data from the controller using serial RS232 communication line. And uh, the camera, as I mentioned, has uh, an Ethernet post uh, using an HTTP protocol. So the PSC sends the, the start and stop signals and reads out the camera data using HTTP. Also, I have an operator interface, which I can use to, you know, calibrate my lenses. And, and I also have a, a focus puller system uh, which is under development so that's also controlled using a, a UDP protocol so basically my my basic uh, 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 network on my uh, system is uh, Ethernet and I'm using different Ethernet protocols and uh, the robot control and the PSCs communicate through RS232 server line. Um, what else can I say? Uh, this is one way how I can teach the robot, like moving by hand. Uh, the other way is, uh, of course, it's possible to, to program the path, give points which I want to reach with the robot, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, have a path uh, uh, crossing those points. It's also possible. And when the mo robot is, is moving, there is always um, a trace which records the points. Uh, the camera, if, if I use the HTTP camera start, then I have the zero point when the uh, camera started and from the zero point I have like 50 samples every second where the robot was in that given time. So later on if I want to put uh, like a VFX uh, background to my image or I want to have a camera tracking I don't need to do it in a traditional way but I have uh, the recorded points which uh, the robot uh, uh, records it and then I can use it in a VFX software. This, this record is, is uh, saved in a CSV file and CSV file and the CSV file 
can be imported to Blender. Um, it's quite, quite quite practical, I think. And it's also really nice that uh, uh, since I've mentioned uh, uh, the robot always starts from home position, uh, that um, if I stop recording today and I want to have the same path tomorrow, it's not a problem because the robot reaches exactly the same position every day. Of course, if you move the whole robot, it's kind of a problem, but uh, if the robot stays in the same position, then, uh, uh, then uh, you can, you can uh, uh, repeat the same path every day if you want. Uh, sometimes they ask the load, the load possibilities. I think it's quite a powerful arm, so I, I, I tried to put a lamp on my camera, which was like, I don't know, two or three kilograms, and it was not a problem. So it's quite powerful. If you want to put some more stuff, a bigger rig, it's, it's not a problem. And it's quite modular, so if I want to uh, transfer it to a location, I can separate the parts, and each part is about 20-25 kilograms, and I can put it in a car and then assemble it in like 30 minutes. So it's not a big deal to take apart and put together the whole arm. Um, also, uh, it doesn't need too much power. Each drive are maybe 100 watts. I have five drives, so the whole power consumption is like, like one kilowatt maximum. So, uh, and, and I need one phase, so I don't need three pa three phase network, and uh, you know it's quite a practical thing that uh, it's not it doesn't need big power, it doesn't need big basement because the whole thing is balanced. Okay, I think that was all uh, for today. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and if you have any thoughts or any questions, just let me know. I'm happy. To hear any feedbacks, any advices, any any questions, I try to I try to answer if I can. So thank you very much again, and see you uh, in my next video. Bye.